Today we have a demo on liver. It is one of the largest organ, nearly 1.5 kg in weight, present in the upper right abdominal wall. That is in the right hypochondrium, partly in left hypochondrium, epigastric region. We have to know about external features, ligament and relations of liver. So we have to hold the liver in anatomical position by keeping the inferior vena cava straight and facing the anterior surface, right lateral surface and superior surface in proper position. So there are two main surfaces that is diaphragmatic surface one and second is inferior surface. So now why it is known as diaphragmatic surface because it is related with the diaphragm that's why known as diaphragmatic surface. So under the diaphragmatic surface there are four main surface. So that is known as the anterior, right lateral surface, superior surface and the posterior surface. And this diaphragmatic surface will be convex while the inferior surface will be related with the visceral organ that's why it will be rough. So let's know in detail so from anterior aspect this is known as anterior surface now this is right lateral surface and from above this is superior surface and from behind this area will be known as the posterior surface and below this is known as the inferior surface which is related with the visceral organ now let's know about uh, the one of the sar border this is not an inferior sar border and which is prominently seen in the liver which separates the inferior surface or visceral surface from the diaphragmatic surface now we have to know about uh, there are two interruptions which is seen near the inferior sar border so now we have to know those two interruptions so can you see here this is known as interlobar notch for the ligamentum teres hepatis so this is ligamentum teres hepatis same how we have the next notch this is known as cystic notch where the fundus of the gall bladder will be located so let's repeat there are total five surface so those five surface we can say anterior surface right lateral surface superior surface this is posterior surface and we have inferior surface except inferior surface the remaining four surface comes on the diaphragmatic surface now let's know about the lobes of the liver so there are two lobes of the liver so this is the right lobe of the liver huge one right lobe of the liver and this is known as the left lobe of the liver now both the lobes is separated with the help of the structure known as falciform ligament so i'll be showing you the falciform ligament so this is falciform ligament which is a derivatives or arise from the ventral mesentery so this ventral mesentery separates the right lobe and the left lobe so this right lobe is larger that is nearly six times larger compared to the left lobe. Now we have to know about uh, the the other structure which separates the right lobe and the left lobe. So this is the fissures for the structure known as ligamentum venosum. Can you see here? This is the structure known as ligamentum venosum, which is a remnant of ductus venosus. So this ductus venosus helps shunting up the blood during the fetal circulations and this is the MCQ question they can ask you. And below you can see here, uh, here we have the fissures for the ligamentum teres hepatis and this ligamentum teres hepatis which looks like a cord like structure and it is a remnant of obliterated left umbilical vein. So with these three ligament the liver is divided into right lobe and the left lobe that is ligamentum venosum which is a remnant of ductus venosus and uh, we have the below that is ligamentum teres hepatis a remnant of left obliterated umbilical vein and uh, same how we have uh, the another ligament from anterior aspect that is known as the falciform ligament which is a remnant of ventral mesentery and which divides uh, the liver into right lobe and the left lobe which is attached anteriorly to the anterior abdominal wall so we have right lobe and this is left lobe same how if we will trace the falciform ligament so let's trace uh, this falciform ligament. So I'm tracing this falciform ligament towards the left side forms left coronary ligament and towards the right side it forms the, the right coronary ligament. So both the coronary ligament of right side and the left side have two layers, right? So we can say anterior and posterior layer of right and the left coronary ligament. So on the right side, the anterior and the posterior coronary ligament which joins together forms a right triangular ligament. So we can see here, the, here we have right but anterior and the posterior coronary ligament and which is above attached to the, the diaphragm and here it forms the bare area of the, the liver. Same how on the left side both the coronary li ligament layer attached together and forms a ligament which is known as left triangular ligament. Here both the layers will come and this is known as left triangular ligament which is attached to the diaphragm above. 
so that's all about the tracing of the the ligament now let's turn the ligament and we will see the posterior and the inferior surface of the liver so and we have to know about the features present in posterior and inferior surface of the the liver so can you see here above this area this much area will be known as the posterior surface of the liver and below we have the inferior surface let's know what are the relations present or the features present in the posterior surface of the the liver this is known as ivc inferior vena cava so this inferior vena cava you can see the openings here and these all are the opening of hepatic veins so these all are the hepatic veins so the blood from the liver comes and drains into the inferior vena cava or drains into the inferior vena cava just towards the left side of inferior vena cava this is the inferior vena cava and towards the left side you can see the separate lobe this lobe is known as c for caudate lobe and uh, this caudate lobe is a part of the right liver so this is a caudate lobe and we have to know about the boundaries of the caudate lobe so towards the left side of the coated lobe we have the fissures for ligamentum venosum and uh, which is also a features of the posterior surface of the the liver and towards the right side we have the ivc inferior vena cava and below it is bounded with the help of the porta hepatis and its content and below uh, above we have the boundaries with the superior surface so these all are the boundaries of the coated lobe now we have to know about the other the other features so towards the right side of the ivc you can see here this area will be known as bare area of the liver and this bare area of the liver is bounded by the two layers of the coronary ligament so we have the anterior and posterior layer of the coronary ligament which is above attached to the diaphragm so this is the area where the peritoneal covering is not present and the portocabular anastomosis takes place over here now if this is a separate caudate lobe we have the caudate process of the caudate lobe which is attached to the right lobe of the the liver so this is caudate process of the caudate lobe and below here we have the term known as papillary process of the caudate lobe so that's all about the features present in the posterior surface of the the liver so this is posterior surface so i'll repeat ligamentum venosum this is bare area of the liver ivc and the caudate lobe and its two process that is caudate process and the papillary process so these are the features of the posterior surface of the the liver now let's know about uh, the features present in the inferior surface of the the liver so in the inferior surface of the liver uh, we have the main main features that is known as the gallbladder and its fossa and it consists of the three parts that is known as the fundus part the body part and the neck part and it is stored nearly 30 to 50 ml of the the bile and it is supplied by the cystic artery so now we have to know about what are the other features towards the left side of the gallbladder you can see the structure that is known as quadrate lobe so this is the structure now this is the structure known as quadrate lobe okay now this quadrate lobe is bounded towards the right side with the help of the gallbladder so this is gallbladder towards the right side and towards the left side by the fissures and ligamentum teres the hepatis below by the inferior sar border and above it is bounded with the help of the porta hepatis and its contents so now this porta hepatis contents are the huge one the large one you can see this is known as the portal vein so 80 percent of blood is carried by portal vein this is hepatic artery and we have the term known as hepatic duct so here we have the term known as hepatic duct so this is hepatic duct so these are the three main content of the porta hepatis now let's know about the relations of the the liver we will start from the posto inferior surface relations of the liver so this is the left lobe of the liver just behind the left lobe and we have the impressions for the esophagus here we have the impression for the esophagus that is just towards the left side of ligamentum venosum impression for the esophagus now same how we have uh, this elevated portion this elevated portion is known as tuber omental and this tuber omental is related with the lesser omentum of the stomach just below and towards the left side here we have the impressions for the gastric impressions that is for the stomach and this area will be known as uh, the quadrate lobe just behind the quadrate lobe the pyloric impressions of the stomach will be present here it means pylorus of the stomach will be related now this is a gallbladder towards the right side of the gallbladder 
here we have uh, the impressions for the large intestine that is the right colic flexor of the large intestine and along with that above we have relations with the, the duodenum that is the small uh, intestine part here we have the right kidney with right supra renal gland will be related so these all are the relations of the postro inferior part of the the liver same how if we turn the liver this is known as right lateral surface of the liver so let's divide the the right lateral surface of the liver into three parts that is upper one third of the liver and uh, same how the middle one third and the lower one third of the liver so this right lateral surface is covered with the help of the diaphragm and it is related with uh, the 7 to 11th ribs uh, the upper one third is related with the lungs and the pleura while the middle one third is related with costo diaphragmatic recesses while the lower one third with the 10th and 9th ribs so the the specimen or biopsy is removed from the 9th and the 10th intercostal this spaces so these all are the relations in the right lateral surface in the anterior surface uh, the liver is related with the anterior abdominal wall as well as the the muscles of anterior abdominal wall and zygoid process I same how the superior surface is related with the lungs and the pleura of the both the side and in the central area it is related with the heart with the pericardium of the the heart some of the clinical aspect we can say bare area of the liver so portocable anastomosis takes place cirrhosis of liver hepatomegaly of the liver uh, there can be a fatty liver will be there will remove the biopsy from the 9th and 10th intercostal space so these all are the features relations the ligaments of the the liver in detail thank you